the uh, like a copy of God's Word, um, the Bible that is, um, New Testament of the Bible offered to you <coughs> quite freely, um, no cost or obligation to you, it's simply um, yours for the taking. God's testimony concerning his son Jesus Christ, um, who of course is uh, the Son of God and God the Son, uh, God uh, manifest in the flesh, God with us, sent of course into the world to save, to deliver us from uh, <clears throat> from a very certain and known danger that of course of our own sinful hearts to uh, bring forgiveness and of course um, well the assurance of uh, eternal life if you like a copy of God's word then do <coughs> feel free to come and ask for one gladly place into your hands quite freely you have of course today just as um, every day a generation, you know, nobody, nobody ever seeks to, uh, you know, present you with, uh, you know, a counterfeit uh, nine pound note because, well, you know, there is, uh, truly, there is no such thing like, you know, not the, the only uh, counterfeit that which is true, you know, or seek to do so. Uh, and of course it's the same when it comes to uh, matters pertaining to God, you know, you've got, you've got the cults and sects, you know, today, last week you had the, the cult of the Seventh-day Adventists here, uh, you know, the, with their book, The Great Controversy, uh, the great controversy God has with them is that their religion is false. And now here today you've got the Watchtower Society over here to my left peddling, peddling their deceit, peddling that which is false, you know, that uh, uh, a deviation, uh, if you like, uh, their literature, their, uh, even their, their Bible is uh, corrupt. There is but one place, dear friends, and one place only to go uh, for the truth, and that, of course, is not even to I myself, but to, to God's Word, to, to the Bible, to what God has written. Cause to be written, and of course, has preserved down through the uh, generations and will do, will do to the end. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the Word of God shall abide forever, says my Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, everybody knows that God is, and of course, uh, uh, it's plain, I'm sure you've heard it many times before, that in the beginning, not evolution, but in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's only the Bible, you see, uh, nowhere else to go if you want to know about the beginning. Evolution doesn't give you a beginning. The uh, false religions of this world, you go to the Quran, that doesn't, they don't give you a beginning. Because, well, you see, only God himself knows how things began. And of course, only God knows how they, how they end. Because everything that has a beginning, well, has an end too. And the Bible, of course, God's word gives us both. It gives us the beginning and the end. He doesn't leave us to, as it were, fumble about in the darkness, wondering where we came from and where it is that we are going. It's all marked out, it's all plainly told us in God's instruction manual in the Bible. In the beginning, God created, not evolution. People ask the question, sometimes quite foolishly, well, who made God? Well, nobody did. It's God who's eternal ever was and ever shall be. Not the world, not the universe. Hello, sir, how are you doing? Not the universe, but God. He's 
an eternal being, always was, always was, always is, and always shall be. He is without beginning and end, but that's not the world, that's not the universe in which we live. It does indeed have an end. But of course, uh, God also makes it quite plain uh, that there's no such a thing as an atheist. They're, they're not spoken about in the Bible, you know, because there is no such a thing. Everybody but everybody knows that God is. That knowledge of God that he is, exists, is stamped upon your innermost being. You have an innate knowledge of God that you cannot get rid of. No matter how much you try, evolution, the false fanciful ideas of men, and of course your false religions, they can't get rid of it either. No friends, uh, you know that God is. The invisible things of him, of God that is, from the creation of the world, from the things that he has made, are clearly seen even his eternal power in Godhead, so that you are without excuse. That is for not knowing God. But of course to know him, to know about him, to know that he exists, is not quite the same as knowing him. Knowing him in a loving, in a right relationship with him, well that's why he sent his son Jesus Christ into the world that through him that you might be saved and that you might be reconciled to God, that you might be brought into a right and proper relationship with God and know Him. Because you see, well, the reason, the urgency of the matter, well, is because you see of what God says about the end. Because at the end, the way things are going to finish up, God tells us is with the appearance of his son. His son is going to return and judge the world in righteousness. And of course, if you're in the state that you're in now, perhaps, not knowing God and not having obeyed the gospel, well then you are going to be faced with the vengeance of God. The Bible says about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ again with his holy angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon all those who know not God and who obey not the gospel. So what is the obedience that God requires of you? Is that you should obey the gospel, that is, repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that you might be brought to a right and proper knowledge of God, that is, to love him. Obedience, that is, to well, the summary that Jesus gives us of God's law, his commandments, is uh, to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. To love your neighbor as yourself. But of course, that's not the case when we don't know God. Well, it's the very opposite. Uh, we hate God and we hate our neighbor. That's how we come into the world, you see. That's, that's the natural state, you see, of man. Conceived in sin, born in sin, and live in sin, hating God and hating your neighbor. Says God, that's the condition of each and every one of us. Until that is by the grace of God, you know, by the grace of God, you see, we we escape, we try to escape from Him, try to run away from Him, you know. Um, the one who would be our protector, who would be our best good, but you see. In our foolish childlikeness, we seek to run away from him. When he would, uh, well, he would bring us to a knowledge of himself and to that place of safety, you know, of well-being, eternal well-being, that is. Knowing our sins forgiven, knowing peace with God, knowing hope that doesn't disappoint, knowing uh, everlasting joy and righteousness, all these good all these wonderful riches, treasures come to us. Why? Well, because God, in his love and grace, sent his only begotten son into the world, and that specifically to die on a cross, in order that that forgiveness, in order that those riches might be ours. Riches, of course, that money can't buy, 
the status, you know, in this world cannot give you, grant to you, give it only to faith, you see. Believing the gospel, believing in the person of God's Son, Jesus Christ. The God man, the one who is God and man both. And of course, in those two natures, in this world, he performed, he accomplished that. Well, what the law, what the commandments of God could not do. That is to save and to deliver us. Deliver us, that is, from, from our sin, from our sinful natures, from our broken, our ruined condition. To bring us back to God, reconcile us to God, grant us peace with God, grant us the knowledge of God. This is eternal life, says the Lord Jesus Christ. To know God and to know Jesus Christ whom he sent but without him of course well we're in a fearful we're in a, a dangerous place Bible says concerning the end time scenario that is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again behold the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. There you go, you see. That's the coming, that's the end time scenario. If you've ever pondered the question in your mind, where will it all end? Where will it all finish? That's where it will finish. The appearing, the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. His appearance, his unveiling. He shall appear in this world once again, not as a child, not as an infant in a manger, but with his holy angels, God's Lamb, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He shall appear as the judge and he is coming as the word of God tells us he's coming to execute judgment upon all for we must all appear before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ that's inevitable the day is coming when God will judge you you may have escaped your crimes and shaking your head sir will make no difference at all will not change the truth he's coming to execute judgment upon you sir and he will judge you for the shaking of your head even in unbelief in unbelief i say you will be judged for your unbelief you'll be judged for your false religion peddling peddling false religion on the street god will judge them for it god will the son of god and God the Son, he will execute judgment in that day. We shall all of us, maybe perhaps there are many, many things that you think that you've gotten away with. Oh, I tell you, there is no creature. Yes, sir. Something to say, sir. Come and talk to me, sir. Come and talk to me. You've not got the courage for that, sir. No. So like I say, you know, it's... Um, you know, there, there is no creature, the Bible says, that is not manifest in his sight. You know, everything is naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account, to whom we must, to whom we have to do. So, you know, you might say to yourself today, I have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. I have nothing to do with the gospel, nothing to do with God. You know, uh, but you, you have to do with him by him that you live and move and have your being. He holds your very next breath in the palm of his hand, so to speak. So you, you have to do with him, whether you like it or not. He's your maker, he's your provider, and he's your judge. He would be your savior, should you believe on his son, Jesus Christ, but, but he will be your judge. He's coming to execute judgment upon all. We will all of us appear before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. That's the end time scenario. 
That's the finish, that's the conclusion of the matter. And why, with great urgency, you want to be seeking after the Lord and finding Him. Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call ye upon Him while He is near, because in that day, in that day when He appears, in that day when He is revealed from heaven with His holy angels, too late then, too late now, then you ought to make it a matter of urgency now to seek the Lord. Before that day comes, before you're found standing before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. Because he's coming to execute judgment upon all. We shall all, every one of us, yourself and myself included, all appear before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. So when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven to execute, execute judgment upon all, and of course to, um, well, to convince, the Bible says, to convince all that are ungodly. What does it mean to be ungodly? Well, I've told you time and time again, contrary to God in your nature, if you're still in the same condition in which you were conceived and born, well, then you're still in your sin. You're still in the flesh, as it were, you know? And friends, as Jesus says, the flesh profits nothing. It's the Spirit who gives life. You must be born again. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, friends, coming, coming to execute judgment and to convince all them that are ungodly, we got a lot of mutterers in Newcastle today. Huh? Muttering, drive-by hecklers, but nobody with the bottle to stand and talk and argue their corner. No, not many of them. But you see, friends, uh, the ungodly, contrary to God in your nature, contrary to God in your practice, he's coming with thousands, the Bible says, of his saints, you will even be, you will even be judged by the people of God, the saints of God. Those who have gone before, those, you know, those who have been saved, those who have been made saints by Jesus Christ, who have believed, that is, upon his name, who have trusted in him, and who have been washed in his shed blood, justified, made righteous before God. You'll be judged even by them and by Judge Jesus. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming to execute judgment upon all and to execute judgment upon the ungodly. Those in an ungodly state, but that's everybody born into this world, naturally speaking. So how does a person get out of that status of being ungodly, unrighteous, unholy? Here's the thing, you see, friends, in order to be made right with God, justified, termed, that is, and from God's perspective, not yours, to be godly, not necessarily religious. It's not, not, it's not about being religious. You can be religious. Go and talk to the Watchtower Society there. They'll, they'll make you religious. You know, or Islam or Roman Catholicism, they'll, they'll make you religious. But they won't, they won't turn you into a saint. They won't, they won't turn you into a, a godly person. They don't have that power. And neither, of course, do I. Only God does. You see, friends, you have to be, well, as Jesus says, you have to be reborn. That nature of yours has to be transformed by the supernatural, miraculous power of God. God has to put his life into a man's soul has to put his love into his heart in order for him transform a new creature in Jesus Christ is how the Bible terms it. Stand. It is a, a good day. No? Speechless. That's how you'll be in the day when you stand before... That's how you'll be in the day when you stand before God, sir. Speechless. 
That's how you'll be, speechless, and not dead. So like you see, friends, you see, or rather, like Jesus says, you must be born again. You see, the nature has to be changed. Given a godly nature, given a right status before God, you know? And only God through Jesus Christ, through my gospel, I can accomplish that, you see? God must do the work. You have to be born of God. It's not of the will of man. It's not of the flesh, you know? It's not of yourself, not of your doing, not of religious subscriptions. It's uh, simply and only of God. God must do it. But of course, he does it, you see. Well, through the proclamation of the gospel, that's why we come to, you see, God in his love and grace, not only sent his only begotten son into the world, you know, to die on a cross that you might be forgiven, that you might be made a godly creature before God, that is, but that you, you know, that, that God in every day and generation raises up his servants and sends them to preach the gospel amongst you in order that those whom God has chosen from before the foundation to faith and salvation, to righteousness and eternal life, that they, out of the masses of humanity, and that's not everybody, but those whom God has chosen out of the masses of humanity would hear the gospel, believe on the gospel, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, turn from their sins, believe, and be saved. Out of the love, the loving kindness, the grace and mercy of God. So you see, friends, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. You might not thank it, but it's a good thing that I'm here today because you're hearing the gospel. You're hearing the gospel proclaimed amongst you, the very and the special means that God has appointed for the salvation of sinners. That if you should repent, if you should turn from your sins and believe, you know, and according to God's command to believe, repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you might be saved. So the means to say by which you can uh, escape that execution of judgment upon the ungodly. He's coming. The Lord cometh to execute judgment upon all, everybody, believer and unbeliever, to execute judgment and to convince all that are ungodly. I mean, I can't convince you that you're ungodly. I can tell you, and I can explain it from the Bible, you know, that you were conceived in sin, that's what God says, and you were born in sin and you live in sin, and that's what it means to be ungodly not to be angry with sin, and especially with your own sin, is to be ungodly. But of course, you're not convinced of that. I can't convince you of that. You think you're okay. You think you have no need, you know, of God. No need of His salvation. No need of His Son, Jesus Christ. You think you're okay. You think you're a good person. You think there's nothing wrong with you. But, you know, I can't convince you otherwise. But I tell you, in that day, I hope and pray, you know, that through the preaching of the gospel, well, that, that you will be convinced, that God himself will convince you of your ungodliness, of your unholiness, your unrighteousness, of your deep and desperate and great need. Because I tell you, in that day, or rather God tells you in that day, when the Lord Jesus shall come, at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of the age, well, he's coming to execute judgment and to convince you, the ungodly, of your ungodliness. Oh, you'll be convinced then. You'll see him as he is in his awesome, absolutely awesome God's Lamb, slain from before the foundation of the world, you will see him in his glory and power. And uh, I tell you, you'll be awestruck with his holiness and absolutely terrified with your own ungodliness. He will convince you then, as I cannot convince you now, 
but be convinced, I tell you, as God tells you, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none good, says God, none that doeth good. There's none righteous, says God, not one. Be convinced of your ungodliness and bring it to Jesus Christ today before he appears again, before he comes to execute judgment upon the ungodly and you convince them of their ungodliness. Be convinced today and bring your ungodliness to the cross of Jesus Christ and get forgiven and get right with God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near before he comes to execute judgment upon all to convince all the ungodly and it goes on to say and to convince them of the ungodly ungodly deeds ungodly things that they have committed but of course everything that the ungodly does is tainted with ungodliness none of it all of it's contrary to God I mean in your nature sinners sinners by nature so therefore everything that you do is tainted with sin the best of your deeds your righteousness says god are like filthy rags everything about you all you are is just a lump of walking breathing talking sin so every word that you speak is ungodly every act every thought is ungodly Everything about you is ungodly, and everything that comes out of you is ungodly. But again, of course, you know, sometimes you pat your health, yourself on the head, you know, you think you've done a good thing. And maybe perhaps you think religious people are like that, you know, they think, you know, the Watchtower Society there, they think they're getting brownie points with God because of what they're doing there on the street corner. But they're ungodly, they're wretched, they're blind, they're naked, they're without God, without hope in this world. They're in a desperate state and condition. And they'll make you in the make you in the same same condition if you if you were to listen to them. But be assured, friends, everything, everything about you and your natural state and condition is ungodly. And, and there's nothing, no good deeds that you can do, religious or otherwise. But that's what religious people think, you know, about themselves. They think because of what they're doing. Doing, doing, doing. They're doing. But God makes it clear, you see, you cannot be godly. You cannot be right with God, justified before God by your doing. Only by believing. Only through faith in the Son of God, who loved sinners and gave himself for them, who came down into this world the first time to appear before men, to be a savior, to live and die and rise again from the dead in order that all sinners such as you and I might be saved from our ungodliness. But of course, first and foremost, he has to convince us of our ungodliness, you of your ungodliness, that there is no good thing in you, nothing about you acceptable to God, the prettiest of you, nicest of you, kindest of you. No, no ma'am, no I won't, no I won't. It would behove you to do that and get on your knees before God and cry out to him before he comes to execute judgment on you because he's coming he's coming plenty of snipers today in newcastle they are bound eh? nothing strange about that that's what comes out of the ungodly you see you you're doing the job for me you're proving my very point talk about god you know I, you talk about santa claus he doesn't exist, you know. I don't get bent out of shape over that because I know he doesn't exist, you know. But I talk about God to you. I talk about his son, Jesus Christ. I talk about your ungodliness. And what happens, you all get bent out of shape. You start getting angry. 
blaspheming and cursing. Why? Well, because you know that God is. You know that God is. You see, it? you're being convinced, but you're not doing the right thing with the conviction. When God convicts you, when God pricks your heart, your conscience, when God stabs you, well, you need to bring that conviction to the right place. And it's not to me. You need to bring it to His Son, Jesus Christ, the one who can clear your conscience before God, who died on the cross for sinners that they might be forgiven and reconciled to God by the blood of the Lamb. So he's coming to execute judgment upon on all those that are ungodly among them. Of all their ungodly deeds, every un ungodly deed that you ever did, thousands, millions of them. And the older, older you are, well, the more they'll be. And they will all in that day be published before the whole universe. Everything you ever did, you'll be covered in absolute shame and disgrace. All the fornicating and thoughts of it, all the undecent, indecent, unclean thoughts, the sodomy, the blasphemy, the idolatry, everything that you ever thought, spoke and did, every idle word, all published before the whole universe, for everybody to see it. And even in that day, these very stones on the pavement here will cry out to you in that day, testify against you, that you heard the gospel, that you were told of your ungodliness and your ungodly deeds, but you would not repent, you would not turn from them, you would not believe and be saved. You'll be left, in other words, without a leg to stand on in that day. Condemned of your ungodly status and your ungodly deeds. By the judge, by Judge Jesus, because he's the judge. The day has been appointed, we don't know when it is, but it's coming and coming soon, not another one. What's the matter with all today? Huh? So, you know, the day has been appointed, and of course, uh, well, like Jesus himself says, comes like a thief in the night. If the thief was coming to your house tonight, you'd be ready. You would have the police called already. You'd have the guard dogs, you'd have cameras set up. But the thief doesn't tell you when he's coming, and neither does Jesus. Coming like a thief in the night, Wham, bam, there he will be, appear, revealed, to execute judgment on the ungodly and upon their ungodly deeds in that day, which they have committed. And of all their hard speeches, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Here's the thing you need to know, you know, when you tell me to shut up, you're telling God to shut up. This is his message. You know, when, when, when you revile me, you're reviling God. When you dishonor God's servant, you're dishonoring God. You know, you need to know that. You need to understand, you know, your hard speeches that you utter week by week, you know, against the gospel and against, against the gospel servant. Be warned, I tell you. He will judge you for your hard speeches that you've spoken against him. It's against him that you're speaking, not me. Do what you will with me. I care not what you do with me. But be warned, God will judge you. Jesus Christ will judge you in that day for your hard speeches, your blasphemous speeches against him. You don't know, you don't understand, you're not sure. Well, the best thing for you to do is to uh, keep mum, say nothing, say nothing. A better still to look, you don't know, you're not sure. Well, look into the matter. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found because he is to be found today by you. Call upon him while he is near. 
He comes near to you, very near to you. In the preaching of the gospel, He sends it to you. And in sending it to you, He comes near to you. So seek Him while He may be found. Because too late then, too late when the Son of God, when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven, when He appears, too late then, then He's come to execute judgment, not salvation, but today He is executing salvation in the world through the preaching of the gospel. Foolishness, yes? Folly says God to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, the power of God, the means by which God executes salvation in order that in order that judgment may not be executed upon you. In order that you might be saved. And of all their hard speeches, hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Is that you? Ungodly? Ungodly deeds? Ungodly status? ungodly to a man to a woman that's us all born into this world and why that needs to be changed and only my gospel only my lord jesus christ himself can affect that change in you only he by his grace it's grace that you need not religion it's grace that brings salvation that brings salvation to men and women conceived in sin and born in sin and live in sin in ungodliness that is and are ripened even some I warn you some are even ripened for ripened for that judgment through the preaching of the gospel do one or two things for you it'll make you better or make you worse It'll harden you. It'll ripen you for judgment or ripen you for salvation. Which will it be? Draw near to God and He'll draw near to you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due season. But you exalt yourself, you know. You lift yourself up in haughtiness and pride. I ain't no sinner. I don't need this. I'm okay, you know. Then God will, God will bring you down. God will bring you down. Bring that self-righteousness. Bring that ungodliness. Bring it, I tell you, to, to the commandments of God. The Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20. Check them out. God's instruction manual. God's school teacher. To teach you of your ungodly status and your ungodly deeds. And to take your self-righteousness, take your pride and arrogance, your haughtiness against God, with your hard speeches against Him, bring them to the law of God and get them shredded until there's not an ounce of self-righteousness in you, until there's not a, an ounce of pride in you, till your heart's broken, until you know that you're without hope and without God in this world until you know until you understand the urgency the urgency of the matter because you don't know when the day will be it is appointed unto man wants to die what happens after that oh I know in your ungodliness you say well that's the end of the matter no it's not you say nobody ever came back to tell us yes they did Jesus did and he tells us, it's in his word, read it for yourself. It is appointed, divinely appointed. An appointment marked on God's calendar. 
a day, an hour, a moment when you will breathe your last and go out of this world at God's behest, not yours. After that comes the judgment. After that you stand before Judge Jesus and he will condemn you everlastingly if you have not believed upon him. He that believeth on the Son, the Son of God, hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. Wrath of God already upon your ungodliness and unrighteousness. God is angry with the wicked every day. But that's the very proof, that's the very evidence of his love. Because people who love are people who are angry with wickedness. People who are not angry with wickedness do not love. They hate. They are the very opposite to God. That's a mark of ungodliness. When you're not angry with wickedness. But here you are today. Here you are, under the sword of God's judgment, waiting to fall upon you. The judge standeth at the door, before the door, says God. And that door will open soon. That day will come when you'll put your socks on in the morning. And you think you'll be taking them off at night, but you won't. It will be the undertaker who'll take them off. You'll be gone out of this world and you'll be before the judge. And he will judge you according to on the basis of what you have done or not done with his son Jesus Christ. That's the basis. That's the only legal basis upon which you can be forgiven and be justified before God by the death of his son Jesus Christ. He paid the price in order to satisfy the justice of God so that the sinner who believes, who truly believes, that moment from Jesus, a pardon, forgiveness, it's the heart of the gospel, it's the means of God, appointed by God that you might escape the ungodliness and the execution of judgment by Jesus upon the ungodly for their ungodly deeds and their hard speeches against him. That you might escape. Flee, flee the wrath to come already presently under the wrath of God. For one day to be under that wrath for all eternity. Nothing but an object of God's wrath for all eternity. That's the end of your ungodliness. Unless Jesus Christ brings it to an end. Unless by my gospel you are saved. Unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Says God, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, repentance, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, repentance, change of mind, change of heart, change of direction, change of practice from ungodly to godly, from sinner to saint transformation by the grace of God. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is thought and let him return unto the Lord. He will show mercy abundantly pardon. There's mercy with God. Grace, grace. Law came by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The grace that saves, the grace that transforms. The grace that rescues. The grace that is declared, proclaimed, 
amongst you here today that through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, turning from your sin, turning from your wayward ways, we all, like sheep, have gone astray, says God. Your way, your pathway, it might seem right to you, but the end of it is death. Only God's way leads to salvation. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says Jesus. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only one way back to God. It's not the Watchtower Society. It's not the Seventh-day Adventists. It's not Islam. It's not Romanism. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, no other, none other name under heaven, given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Jesus, thank you, madam. Jesus Christ, no other, no other, no other was good enough to pay the price of sin and open heaven's gates, let sinners in. No other. Listen, will you, to God's word, the Lord cometh to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. And what's the end of that? What's the end of that judgment? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's the end of it. You heard Johnny Cash's song about the lake of fire? And it burns, 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 the lake of fire. Why does it burn, burn, burn the lake of fire? Because it's never short of fodder to keep the fire going. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there shall in no wise enter into heaven anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. For without, outside of God's heaven that is, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The ungodly with their ungodly deeds call upon you today, command you even, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, repent, for God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish in the lake of fire. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Newcastle, while you may. Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. You like to check these things out with God's word? Word of God, New Testament in its entirety, offered to you freely, without cost or obligation to you. You'd like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy, mercy, Newcastle, upon your precious, precious, never-dying souls.